Hello everyone and welcome to this new video of Hearts of Iron 3 as I have promised. This time I won't show you any gameplay because I'm gonna discuss about the defensive strategies that you can use when you play the Soviet Union with one of the best mode ever made for Hearts of Iron 3 which is, as you can see, the Black Eyes mod. I won't go into details about diplomacy, production technologies and so on because I don't have time. I will focus uh, strictly upon the military terms and the strategy terms. Uh, so first of all let me just explain uh, one thing. Some players decide to go with uh, unhistorical gameplays. The unhistorical gameplay can be divided into two parts. You can build unhistorical divisions or you can do an unhistorical uh, defense. I will go for an historical defense, an, an historical division composition, sorry, and unhistorical defense, but I will explain you uh, which could be the most effective and most ineffective strategies that you can use when you play with Black Eyes and the Soviet Union of course. And I repeat, I'm gonna play with the uh, historical division composition which for instance regarding the uh, infantry, the rifle divisions, is the following. One infantry brigade, one recon cavalry uh, attachment, one anti-tank, one artillery, one engineer uh, brigades. So, uh, just don't worry about the uh, order of battle because I will explain this uh, at the end of the video. So, to, to, to the Molotov plan. One of the historical uh, defensive plan is to is the Molotov plan. Basically, what is what really happened in our his, his history? the soviet players player should deploy all its divisions along the uh, new border which will cover all these uh, front that i have enlightened in yellow if i'm not mistaken because at the end of the war with, with the poland you get this bulge you get all eastern poland you get uh, bessarabia which is this region yeah Bessarabia from Romania and yeah this is in black eyes this is a suicide if you want to play with an historical division uh, composition why is this because as soon as operation Barbarossa will start you will suffer where is it I've lost it Oh my god. Anyway, the you, the Soviets will suffer a huge penalty in uh, land organization. Which means that if you have all your troops deployed along the German border, they will simply uh, get uh, steamrolled and Unless you don't have a second defensive line, your your I mean your game is almost over. Some people may want to defend along this Narev River and sacrifice this bulge, but I think that the result will be exactly the same because of the of this uh, land organization penalty. So the the Molotov plan is a no. To, to, to remove it, the Tukachevsky plan. The Tukachevsky plan is basically a defense in depth. Defense in depth means that you have to create at least three defensive lines. The one is more or less like the Molotov plan, as you can see. You can sacrifice this bulge and also Bess Bessarabia. 
you create a first defensive line here you, you get a second defensive line right behind the, the first yeah maybe in this direction here and a third even if it's not shown here uh, behind the second if you want a fourth defensive line behind the third what's the meaning of this basically the axis uh, troops will have to fight for every province but as soon as your troops will get defeated they will fall back into a friendly province with other troops already dug in so as long as the axis the axis troops advance they have to face more and more uh, Soviet troops personally I want I don't like this kind of strategy because it's a bit cheaty why you can simply pump out uh, militia divisions and with NKVD you know garrison NKVD and militia no, I don't have militia I don't know anti-tank no and well if you get uh, for instance a strong third defensive line the war of attrition with the Axis power will start and in the end of course you will become victorious but I repeat I don't like this strategy for this main reason then there is what I've called the DDD plan or which stands for the Daugava Dnieper defensive line this is by far from what I've seen from the videos uh, I've, I've watched from the AA, AAR I've read this is by far one of the best option that you can choose basically you have to fortify all this region starting from Sigulda north of Riga behind the uh, Daugava River you turn south here in these two provinces of Polat Polatsk and, and Lipil and then you start holding the ground behind the Dnieper River in Gomal and all along the, the Dnieper River you may also want to defend Dnipropetrovsk which is you know well it has level 10 airbase and two uh, industries so you better hold it um, in green you see um, some options some alternate options I also seen some players may want to extend their defensive line uh, around Vitebsk and Smolensk and uh, somebody else prefer to uh, defend from Kiev to Nemirov and Vinitsa and then again along this this river these are variants some people may also want to hold Kiev as a strategic bridgehead from which to launch for instance a pincer movement with which to cut out all the access troops in the uh, Dnieper valley This is, I've said, this is the best uh, defensive line because you have to sacrifice some of your ground because, yep, you have to give up all these area. You will lose uh, manpower, you will lose uh, industrial capacities, maybe some leadership, but but you have two, two rivers which form a very solid defense and basically you can hold the Axis divisions for I think until March 1942 there are some uh, uh, cons about this uh, defensive line the first cons is represented by the province of Daugavpils the province of Daugavpils K 
can be attacked from four different di directions, which are Livani, Rokiskis, Zarazel and Breslov. Believe me, the Axis AI will attack you from four different directions, so it is extremely important that you have a maybe not so strong but uh, abundant reserve with which to uh, alternate the divisions defending this, this province. Also about Riga, some people want to defend Riga. Mm, I won't do it because again Riga is true that it's a urban province and the urban provinces gives a huge bonus to the uh, defending troops but again Riga can be attacked from four different different provinces and is not covered by rivers so it's up to you the second uh, weak point of this uh, DDD line is represented by these two provinces these are plains provinces and in black eyes plains means tanks you have to uh, bring up heavy troops for instance uh, I don't know some heavy armor or a lot of anti-tanks or even if you have the technology uh, where is it the is it, is it? did you yeah if you have the dual purpose anti-aircraft anti-tank guns you can put some uh, AA batteries I mean regiments here otherwise this is by far one of the best uh, defensive line that you can rely upon when you have to defend the Soviet Union against the fascist invaders but since I want a challenging game I have elaborated a very strange plan which I've called the Lenin plan oh. Yep, I have already spoiled something. Okay, so the Lenin line is the following. It starts from Finland here in the north, where basically I will have to hold these, 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 these five provinces. And it comes down here, it covers Leningrad, the province of Schlesenburg, it runs behind the Volkov River, it makes a bulge here, a second bulge, this is I think it's the Lovat River, and then it uh, runs up here behind the Volga, behind the Volga Lake, I don't know. It comes right in front of Moscow. It occupies Kaluga. And then... Yeah, I don't know. Is the... I don't remember the name of this river, but I don't think it's important. It runs behind this river. It will run across Kursk. It establishes a bridgehead in Kharkov and then as you can see it follows the course of the Don River until Stalingrad where it will uh, run again behind the Volga and of course yes maybe in into Astrakhan too in the south in the Caucasus it runs behind the Terek across the Caucasus mountains the Rasnodar River, yes, and it holds a bridgehead in Crimea in the Krasnoperekov Pass. Oh, and most important is the province of Rostov and Don. Why is this? Because since I have been playing, I mean, dozens of gameplays with Germany. I am used to the Blitzkrieg tactic. I don't like the war of attrition, and so I'd like to try this 
blitzkrieg strategy also with the Soviet Union. Basically, my plan is the following. I will let the Axis troops advance deep into the Soviet Union and as soon as they are here in the Asian steppe maybe I don't know but more than likely I will launch a counterattack from Rostov and Don and I will rejoin my troops in uh, Svatove and Staroblisk because there is only a 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, a 6 province gap here. So it's it should be quite easy to close this gap and then wipe out all the axis divisions here in this step. As soon as this is accomplished, I will launch some pincer movement, some armored thrust in a pincer movement in uh, this is Belar Western Russia, in southern Ukraine and in the Baltic states. Now you can uh, now you have understood why I have decided to hold a bulge here and a bulge here. As soon as I will complete these encirclements, I will then re reorganize my forces and I will advance deep into Europe, into Hungary, Romania, Poland and of course Berlin. Now the funny things starts now because as you can see the order of battle is empty. Is empty, right? So let me just do one thing here. I have to wait. Oh god, one pro is there. So I will delete these these two this one here and these two um, yep yeah. and we'll, this is just spike catching economic boost long-term investment railway yeah play guys game guide awesome yep the difficulty as you may know there are two uh, levels of difficulties. The one is the standard the vanilla difficulty game which is set on normal and the other one is the black ice difficulty level. Since I want a more challenging game I will go with the hard difficulty and again to make things more interesting I will go on with very hard China, with hard Japan, hard Italy, and hard Germany. And why not also hard allies? You may have wonder you may start wondering how the hell can you defend such a long line? Well I have made as you can see some custom decisions. Well, this is not my custom de decision. I prefer a more balanced, sane approach. An important goal for the so for the Soviet Union is to build up your IC empire. As you can see, I have nothing into production. But since I am a lazy player, I have scripted a custom decision. We need more IC. War with Germany is inevitable. This is why we must expand our war industry with new plans beyond the, Euro 
the Urals where the enemy will not be able to bomb them. Of course, since we are still at peace, not everyone will be so happy to work all around the clock to build such new buildings in Siberia. So basically, build more I see. I will receive gratis, for free, some uh, industrial capacities in Gorky, Camera, blah, 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 blah. But, as you can see, I will lose some resources. I will gain 6 points of uh, descent. And to make things more real, uh, realistic. Yeah, okay. Revoltress. Uh, no, where. To make things more realistic, as you can see, I have added. Uh, two uh, country modifiers. The one is specific for Siberia. I will get a 20% of revolt risk in Siberia, a minus 15% of manpower, minus 40% of IC, and minus 15% of local resources, always in Siberia. What does it mean? It means that uh, I've thought I want to build up new factories, but not all the people will be happy to build and to work into my factories so for uh, to, 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 I don't know for 200 days I think it is yep I will suffer all these uh, analysis and in general I will suffer a minus 10% of IC and a more 10% of revolt risk in all the Soviet Union this means that 10% of my factories will be involved in building new materials for the other factories I'm gonna build in Siberia and again this is the production yeah maybe I will tweak this because I don't know what happened but normally uh, the production queue should not be so advanced well I will tweak this later Garrison the Far East. As Panzeru said in the 7.53 uh, update, the Japanese AI may declare war upon the Soviets. Since I don't want to get bogged down, I have scripted this decision which will give me level 1 fortress and level 3 pillbox all along the Japanese border. The Leaning Line, yeah. The Leaning Line is the decision that will give me that will allow me to fortify all this border. Of course, it comes at a heavy price because, as you can see, I have again, I will lose for 950 days. 40% of IC, 60% of manpower, 20% of metal, and 25% of energy. This means that for 900 days, 40% of my factories will be involved in creating bunkers and fortifications, and of course this 20% and 25% of energy means the uh, re resources that are being used to fortify these uh, all these provinces and again these minus 60% of manpower represent all the people which who are w working hard all around the clock to build these fortifications the red air force yeah, I need a large red air force, and as you can see, ta -da, I have added, I don't know how many uh, air wings into the production queue. And this is why, I forgot to say, I will not produce anything, because as you can see, every wing has its own custom name. I didn't want to spend time in creating things and then renaming them. Organize the Red Army. 
the Red Army gets ready and here we go I have concentrated all the divisions in Moscow I also have as you can see some guards divisions and important every division has its own historical order of battle meaning that the 15 guards rifle division has the 44th 47th and 50th uh, guards rifle regiment the 43rd guard art artillery regiment and so on Uh, the, the, the Moscow Institute of Railway Engineering this was an actual mm, institute that existed in Moscow and so I decided to add this to the game the reaction engine scientific research Institute this is where the Katyushas were created and we need more tanks we need tanks and tanks are coming good and as you can see I have yep, other tanks mechanized and armored support brigades in the production queue I don't know if you can read but these are named guards tank brigade why because here we go I have scripted these custom units which are mechanized brigades I have tank brigades I have these these are, are not historical divisions these are experimental divisions I wanted to, to try in the uh, Baltic states I will use them in the Baltic states because here we have mainly forests provinces and normal infantry maybe will face some difficulties I have the motorized and mechanized divisions 38 tank divisions and 9 guards airborne divisions which however are still uh, normal divisions because as the uh, as the guards rifle divisions I will have to upgrade them to the guard status as soon as I will receive the guards uh, activation event and then here I have some NKVD troops and all the HQs that I will use to build up my army yep again idea I didn't want to create manually HQs and then rename them one at a time so I have created this group of HQs here and I will assign uh, divisions to them this might sound a bit cheaty but as you can see every division here has is almost dead I mean I will have to invest a lot in reinforcing my troops I will have to invest a lot in officers maybe not maybe I have a bit exaggerated with officers yeah I will I will remove some of them later but anyway I will have to invest manpower in reinforcing my divisions and also in upgrading them to make uh, again to make things much more uh, balanced of course about the revolts to make the game more challenging I will accept 
the revolts and I have already created this NKVD theater which yep why not to which I will I, Anyway, I will attach to this NKVD theater. It's not allowed to move. All the NKVD units and I will set these to AI so that I will not have to worry about the uh, spam of partisans. We have... Oh, the bank. Send help. And science. So, I think that it's all for now. Uh, in the next video, I will discuss about the order of battle.